Perfect. Okay. All right. Can everybody, everybody can see the slides? Yes. <laughs> All right. Our last speaker then for this showcase is, uh, sorry, Scott. Scott Fitzgerald, because I had the wrong name now because they switched on me, talking uh, uh, Scott Fitzgerald from Mercury Systems, talking about remote phone locator for improved emergency rescue or replier. Scott? Thank you, sir. So, yes, we are talking about remote phone locator for improved emergency rescue. This was a small business innovation and research project. Uh, we made it to a phase two, and then the funding had ceased. Uh, next page. Um, the potential and the need, uh, basically, first responders uh, with responsibility for maritime search and rescue, they, they just don't have an effective means to track the cellular signal, signals, uh, basically in the maritime and the, basically the remote border domains, uh, basically SAR. Um, when we have a cell phone, even if it's out of range of a terrestrial based tower, uh, it's, it's basically still a tool to be used to assist those in need. Uh, and those are not my kids out in the, on, the, on the water there, so. Um, again, U.S. Coast Guard, <laughs> Border Protection, uh, and uh, uh, Four Star uh, basically have this need. Organizations that may benefit, again, Maritime Search and Rescue, <clears throat> Border Patrol, and even prison systems with contraband cell phone detection. <clears throat> Baseline technology. So there are several, there are several uh, direction finding signal intelligence products on the, on the market, but they're very expensive. <clears throat> and they don't meet the, meet the needs of all of DHS, such as privacy concerns. They, they don't meet all the requirements. Uh, those markets on the uh, uh, today on the market are, you know, they're 150K on up. Uh, we're talking about 20K for our replier system. Uh, and again, the objective is to seek appropriate balance between the cost and performance. Uh, the customer gave us these requirements. Hey, listen, you need to harness the radio frequency energy from the cellular phone. Uh, capture the metadata, you know, the IM, uh, uh, IMSI identity, basically understanding the identity. That's how we, we catch you. It's got to be small, lightweight, portable, durable, uh, and offer the same levels of durability and protection as the responder's current electronic equipment, which is the ingress protection class 64 for antenna and to the device, uh, device itself. Uh, the replier, it, it, it basically what it does is it enables localization of persons in distress um, and the resolution of 78 uh, meters. Um, reply, again, it discriminates the big thing, the big deal between our system and the rest. It, it, it basically discriminates between the target and other cell phone devices. Uh, there's no disruption of uh, traditional cell phone services or violation of privacy, which is, which is pretty important. Uh, a lot of people get very nervous when uh, things are jammed or there's violation of, of privacy and listening and things of that nature. So uh, that's what the replier stays far away from. It is small, light, lightweight, portability, ease of integration, uh, again, for such rescue 21. <clears throat> and like I mentioned before, ingress protection 67 display provide durability and compatibility. And what you can see is that's our current model right now. You have the, the, uh, the screen, the box itself with the electronics. Uh, and then you see the GUI kind of gives you an idea of the target IMSI, the target distance in kilometers, and you know get up to the right hand uh, corner there. And then this uh, SNR ratio, so it gives you basically everything you need to track down and locate uh, the distress signal or person. Uh, moving on to the next slide, if you look at the first box to the left, uh, you can see it, it, it went, it walks you through the system itself, right? Um, this user been distressed, right? Um, and then the, the the second step is the SAR team scan the offshore environment with replier, which detects the distress call. And then after the, acting as a surrogate a cellular base, replier establishes a link, and it determines the distance of the target by time of flight. And then SAR basically identifies direction of distress call uh, with basically the antenna and triangulation, which helps geolo geolocate that user or person in distress. And then if you look to the other, uh, to, the, to the right, the, um, the, the, the cartoon that you see there, again, it's a high gain directional antenna providing long range while simultaneously avoiding interference with other cell phone users, which is key. No, no interference. And the portability allows you to move it around. And also uh, uh, user distress attempts to call 911, but the cell towers are out of range and blocked by the terrain. So Replier gets in there, finds the distressed uh, person or persons uh, or thing, and, and, and we're able to locate them. The actual performance specs that we have here, uh, the feature, you can see feature advantage and benefit. 
but it has to use off the off the shelf of components because we had we didn't have a lot of money in the Sibber. Uh, the benefit to that is right now, uh, you know, again, you got 20k per system as opposed to 150k per system out of, uh, that the competitors have. Uh, it doesn't compete uh, complete connection sequence to the target cell phone. It basically doesn't violate any cell phone users' privacy. The range resolution, as you can see, is 78 meters, distance up to 100 kilometers. Uh, it's quicker rescue, right? You can get to them. And again, it identifies a cell phone basically by the IMSI, uh, which is a uniquely identifies distressed boat or a lost hiker ETC. So you'll know, uh, you'll know who that uh, who that IMSI belongs to. Comparison with other options, I mean, here, so that's this is why DHS put this requirement out there. <clears throat> Again, the biggest competitor is Harris Kingfish and Stingray devices, and then you have Replier. So for the most part, um, Replier extracts the IMSI and determines the distance and directions. It refuses the connection, uh, doesn't violate policy of uh, privacy. Uh, and as small, it's basically a small form factor. Power requirements usually located on those vessels. The Border Patrol search vehicles themselves, and again, does not force connection. And the cost is 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 really competitive. You know, you got 150k versus 20k uh, per Mercury's unit. Um, so when will reply be available? Right now, we do need some some funding to. We do have a we have a prototype. It, it is working. We've we've uh, gone out to sea. We've gone. Um, uh, we've we've done uh, certain tests events, uh, but it, it's still not quite just there. We you know to make it uh, a little smaller, a little more agile. Um, and uh, as you can see there, um, we uh, the milestone of uh, are out of the prototype we have now. And basically, if we receive more funding, we can go ahead and, uh, again, make it smaller, make it more uh, conducive to the need of, of whoever, it, whatever service needs it. Uh, this was, I just put in there, if there's any questions for potential customers, um, pretty, pretty basic. Are there any field events test uh, that, that someone, someone could be uh, uh, very interested in replier and want to see it in their uh, in a field test. If you have one that will be willing to show up and do it, uh, again, test our system and provide feedback. If you're interested, we can come do that. We can come out to you. Uh, do you see any potential funding? As, as I'm sure everybody's asking, and do you know any DOD commercial sector looking for this particular type of technology? If so, we'd love to hear from you. Um, uh, just so you know, uh, Mercury uh, Systems, uh, we were a physical optics corporation. We got uh, bought by Mercury about a year ago. Uh, but Mercury as a whole, we do this just to give you a quick update. We do electronic warfare, airborne and in, in environmental simulators. We have mission systems, basically displays and avionics uh, subsystems. We, ha we also have radio frequency microwave uh, products. We have embedded processing. Uh, we have microelectronics, and then we have edge processing. So just so you know, we're we're a bigger company, and we have uh, lots of resources to make things happen. And if you need to get a hold of us and would like to talk to us a little bit more, and, I, and if I can't answer the questions online here, uh, my name is Scott Fitzgerald. I'm in the middle there. That's my email. That's my phone number. Um, We'd love to hear from you, and I think we can, uh, you know, I can give you any information you need about where the state of uh, the technology that we have right now. That's it. That's all I have. All right. Thank you very much, Scott. Um, for the audience, again, uh, if you have any questions, type them in the Q&A box, or if you want to reach out to Scott or David directly, their contact information is there. All right. Looks like we have our first question for you, Scott. Uh, they ask, if the phone is out of range of the normal cell site, wouldn't it be saying no service? Why would a user dial 911 in a no service area? Well, that's just it. They won't be able to die. They, they won't be able to get the service. But again, if they're if they're if they know we're missing, uh, if they know we're, that we know that they're missing, and they and, and all we got and we know their IMSI number, we can go ahead and sniff them out. All right. Thank you. Let's see if any other questions come in. Anything else you want to point out from your end, Scott? 
No, I'm good. If anybody wants to get a hold of us and have a telecom, please contact me at the at the uh, information sheet you see there. All right, great. Yep. And so, yeah, if any other questions come up, contact him. Otherwise, thank you, Scott. Have a great day. Okay, thank you. All right, bye. All right, so that's it for my end. I'm throwing it back to Dusty. All right, so thank you to all the uh, troopers that were able to uh, hang out with us for the afternoon. Um, appreciate your attendance. I thought these were all um, incredibly interesting presentations and technologies that um, we're looking forward to seeing how they can they can pan out. Um, I, as promised, um, well, first, let me say um, if you need to contact us, this is our information on this slide. Um, and we also want to let you know about the upcoming ST Hill Day for first responders. So this is sort of a complimentary um, event. It's another event. Um, this one's going to be an interactive and it's going to highlight the research investments that are being made across ST for the current and emerging th threats facing the responders, first responders and communities. Um, and it's, it's just showing the way we're mobilizing tech, another way we're pushing the boundaries of science. So visit the um, the link at the bottom, and I think Connie is going to throw that into the question area for folks if they would like to um, make sure that they're able to attend. And then if you don't see that, then we can make sure you email us at stsbir.program at hq.dhs.gov, and we'll make sure we share that with you. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us today and for sticking with us.